So one of the questions I received is about um, alien life forms. So many people are either very much uh, enamored by aliens, they think they are like saviors, they come here to rescue us or to teach us something or to help us. Other people are very phobic about aliens, they think they are here to take over, to control us, to do something horrible to us. And <clears throat> I think the main, the main thing is also to understand that aliens are not really a new thing. They are something which has been around since yeah, pretty much humanity for the last 20,000 years. Uh, at least we've been having alien visitors and there is contact with them. And there is really a difference in the continuity which is on a physical level and the continuity on an energetical level. But on a physical level things tend to move ra relatively slowly. Like there is of course change because the climate changes and species evolve. So for instance like maybe in the last half a million years yeah some uh, yeah animals have split off from the main branch and are forming new species but with a much greater rapidity we find actually that the spirits which incarnate on our planet become very very different and they come from actually from different stars um, so in a way we're all immigrants, we're all wanderers among the starry seas. So if we look at humanity specifically and not at the larger whole which has been going on for millions of years, um, we find that if we look back at the roots of humanity roughly 40,000 years ago, uh, that there are spirits inhabiting human bodies which we would now call Lemurian. And the Lemurians were very different spirits from the spirits which are now inhabiting the human bodies. Uh, they had a co very strongly collective consciousness where um, there was not that much individualization. Uh, there was also not much separation even between them and other spirits. So they felt completely one with the earth, with the trees, um, with the other animals. And out of this oneness, um, they gained knowledge, they gained understanding uh, of themselves, of their own power, of their own influence they can have on other beings, but also of um, yeah, how the other beings can interact with us. So they were, in a way, working, you could say, uh, from a, a very high perspective, from looking at it from a divine plan of all creation. Um, this was their nature, this was their perception. And uh, roughly 20,000 years ago, uh, the Lemurians started to become displaced by new, by new arrivals. And these new arrivals are the Atlanteans. So there are many stories, of course, of Atlanteans having a very high culture and that their um, yeah, island or their continent was, yeah, destroyed by some disaster. And it is true, the Atlanteans did meddle with powers they could not control very well. And eventually they decided that since they kind of wrecked their home planet, they decided to come to our planet, to the Earth. And um, so the, you could say the continent or the island of Atlantis is not on our planet. It is actually in another solar system. But they brought the racial memories uh, with them when they started to take over human bodies. And pretty much everybody who's here now in a human body is actually an Atlantean spirit. So we are all aliens, pretty much. And um, these Atlanteans, they formed colonies here on Earth. And they started to, yeah, of course, bring their own culture, bring their own knowledge into the the Murian pre-existing population and um, these colonies were cr created along the uh, Rocky Mountains um, and the Andes range. Um, they were created in Persia, in uh, the Ural Mountains 
um, and in uh, Egypt and uh, um, what is now uh, Iraq. Um, and they started working along a very different principle. So the Lemurians were working more or less in from a perception which was very much everything being in harmony, following a divine plan, being in a certain order. Um, but the Atlanteans brought with them something which was very new, namely the principle of power. That things are not what they are, but things are actually uh, malleable, things can be changed, things can be transmuted, things can be transformed by the application of power. So they brought with them, you could say, the knowledge of tools, the knowledge of workmanship, that stone can be worked, bone can be worked, metal can be worked, and also energies can be worked. So they started a process of transformation. Well, there is always some transformation, like rain falls on mountains, and there is a process of erosion. Um, now there was, there has actually started to be change, which was dictated by willpower, by a plan, which is a mental structure, by a focus of not just allowing your energy to be part of a greater whole, but focusing the energy to one goal, to one purpose, and thereby. Uh, and especially if you combine the energies of many men and women, you can create great works, like for instance the pyramids. So what they created was also a very different society. Uh, they started to create a hierarchical society. In this hierarchical society, um, people were um, yeah, you could say ordered, depending on their skill level. If a person is very skilled at transmuting things, at using their power, they became yeah, persons in a very high caste, and persons with very little ability of uh, yeah, managing any transformation, who are more like, actually more like a stone being worked upon, rather than the stone worker, uh, they yeah, became the lower caste. And society evolved from this, and this society, of course, started yeah, to work on its great works um, in Persia, in uh, Egypt, and also in the Americas. The big issue is now, what will happen? Because the Atlanteans have been here for a while, and Unfortunately, they seem to be repeating a little bit the pattern they had in their, uh, in their previous habitat, where they basically just wrecked the whole place and destroyed it for everyone. And we're also seeing that humans are now uh, creating a very toxic environment for both themselves and for other species and are disrupting also the development, not just the physical development, but also the yeah, karmatic and energetical development of other species by their interference in other species' habitats. So it is possible that they will once again be banished and that they will be forced to leave our solar system and many of these Atlanteans are very afraid of this. They don't want to lose what they have built, what they have worked tens of thousands of years in constructing our modern day society. They're very fearful and they want to keep out all aliens. They don't want to be displaced as they displaced the Lemurians themselves. So they're trying to use their tools, their skills, um, to make sure that no aliens can displace them, to yeah, keep the Earth for the Atlanteans. Uh, ultimately though, it is not them who will decide. It is ultimately the consciousness of the Earth, the consciousness of our star and of other stars, which will have to decide what to do, whether the Atlanteans should stay, whether they should go, what should happen to the other spirits which are here. Maybe they should leave because the Atlanteans are disrupting their lives. Maybe they should take the opportunity and migrate to another star where they can survive in a more 
natural habitat where they can follow their normal path of development instead of like being yeah turned into yeah I don't know some factory farming animal which has a horrible existence which it is not meant to have so the future is still quite open but what we do see is that there are a lot more contenders coming to the earth recently so we have a lot more different influences and a lot of more people with different uh, ideas about society with different skills coming to the earth recently and over the past like yeah 10 20 years and i think this period of increased interstellar traffic will continue for a while um, until a new modus is found so right now we're in a state of different yeah you could say civilizations making a bid for who will develop the earth over the next tens of thousands of years so regarding this like you could say next wave of, uh, of aliens uh, it goes through several stages you could say like about 15 years ago all the aliens which were coming here to observe um, usually they were merely observing they didn't incarnate into human bodies uh, they were just trying to understand how life works on this planet how humans work how human personalities work how human energy bodies work and what we see now is that they've in a way moved from the observational stage into an experimental stage they are starting to uh, yeah, either work directly by incarnating or taking over human bodies or by advising healers uh, or by working well themselves disembodied experimenting with the healing of human bodies and trying to uh, see how things react how things work whether their principles can actually be applied in our solar system because um, spiritually every solar system has a different set of laws so while in a way the laws of physics may be universal the spiritual laws aren't um, for instance in our solar system we have karma but in most solar systems there is no such thing no such necessity uh, to control reincarnation because yeah people uh, yeah, simply know what forms are good for them and what forms are appropriate for them so there's not the much confusion in the incarnated being and so they don't need to be corralled more or less by karma or limited by karma because they would not overstep their boundaries anyway so relatively speaking we are a quite primitive uh, society and we have a very yeah primitive understanding so there are yeah of course races and beings which are far more primitive than us so we're i would say around average some people say above average other people say below average it's hard to tell um, what you usually find is that first of course come the scouts then the experiments and then in a way the prototypes and we're starting to get to the prototype stage where people are um, yeah, being uh, inhabited by this alien consciousness by an alien uh, spirit who's trying to in a way see what way of incarnating what uh, is yeah, possible and often these alien incarnations can be recognized quite easily by looking at their chakra constellation because they often have a very different chakra constellation which corresponds to their having a very different personality structure it's also possible to find a human which has a very different personality structure for another reason namely that they have recently um, yeah, also moved form so for instance if something has been uh, a dog or a cat or a nature spirit and has recently started to incarnate a human body then a lot of the structures they had before will yeah, still be there because their personality will still be similar to a dog or a cat or a nature spirit but the differences between um, you could say things which are earthly in nature and also have a more or less earthly personality 
uh, what is to us a relatively normal personality and the beings which are alien in nature is quite big. Um, some of these people are actually, uh, you could say, um, recruiting. Uh, so there are some healers um, who in a way are busy transforming uh, human energy bodies through their healing practices to make them suitable for spirits of their kind and less suitable for the original inhabitants. So usually the original inhabitant will yeah, be forced out of the body and so that the alien spirit can move into the body. And usually these types of healings they have very um, beautiful names to disguise their true purpose, namely of body snatching, and they call it things like reconnection healing and things like this. And from a purely physical perspective, it is great because indeed the body is stronger, the body is healthier, um, and because of the new personality structure there are less emotional problems, less emotional suffering. So if you look at it from that perspective, it is a great improvement. And in a way, it is the old spirits and the old model of energy body is being outfaced and replaced by uh, a being which is more fit. But well, unless you feel so strongly about evolution that you wish to be replaced by a more fit form, uh, I would not advise these uh, these healing methods. Um, but besides these rather forceful methods which can happen, um, there are also much more uh, friendly aliens which are uh, doing things more in cooperation with the local inhabitants. Uh, just one more thing about the, um, the forceful methods. The forceful methods usually require uh, a decent amount of energy to create such a big transformation in a relatively short period of time. So often these are done during group workshops. In general these workshops will be free um, and in general there will be more than yeah uh, more than 10 people usually closer to 20 people at these workshops and actually a large part of those people at the workshops will already have been transformed and they will actually uh, work on the transformation of the other people attending those workshops so um, if you go to a meeting with 10 or more people and they're doing yeah, energy work which uh, functions on the whole group, uh, be wise, vote with your legs, don't care whether it is rude or whether you've paid a lot of money for it. Uh, if you don't want to get kicked out of your body, if you don't want to be in a way uh, needing an exorcism because there will be alien spirits trying to take over your body, just walk out of there. And unfortunately these practices, they've been going on for the past you know, five years that I know of and maybe already longer. And they're also getting more common because these, yeah, in a way, invasion forces, they're growing. But um, let's talk a little bit also about the the choices we have because from our perspective you can say like gosh these aliens are coming here they are superior to us what's happening to us as poor Lemuria as poor sorry Atlanteans trying to destroy our planet why are we being interfered with why is the Sun allowing this new breed to come in here well maybe it is indeed because the sort of spirits are disagreeing with our yeah, uh, disrupting all life on the planet. Maybe there's some other reason, I'm really not sure, I couldn't say. But we're far from powerless. So besides the typical fear reaction and trying to block everything alien, um, I think it's impossible to remember also our spiritual laws. That of attraction. Alike energies are attracted by alike energies. If we live here on a planet which is full of fear, of repression, of violence, what type of spirits will we attract? Spirits which are fearful, violent, oppressive. And how will they treat us? In a violent way, in a way which engenders fear. And we will be oppressed. 
if we exist here in a state of like peace, harmony, cooperation, we will attract spirits which are attracted to peace, harmony and cooperation and that impulse will be amplified. So we are in a way extending invitations to the rest of the cosmos and who will come here? Well, the people we invite will come here. And unfortunately, given the current state of our planet and the state of humanity, we are, well, inviting the, yeah, you could say the dredges uh, of the cosmos, the lower part of the cosmos, to come to our planet and to make it into, well, a not so nice place. So the vibrational level of our planet is, of course, never a constant. There's always events going on. And, but I would have to say that for the past, well, yeah, 10 years, it's been steadily declining. And given that, yeah, we are now in a very sensitive period where a lot of impulses are being, yeah, drawn to our solar system, we're not making the most of our opportunities since we're in a way inviting uh, more negative energies rather than positive energies. So it is very unfortunate that this sensitive period is actually coinciding with the periods in which our uh, um, society uh, as humans is not very healthy but also much more importantly that we are creating so much pain and suffering in the animal world and in the plant world and in the spirit world uh, because their suffering is much greater than the human suffering and it is really attracting a lot of negative attention to our planet so we are in a way um, pulling in our own uh, yeah uh, torturers by torturing others so there is a good reason to be afraid of aliens because we are inviting uh, yeah, horrible yeah, masters of torture because we are horrible masters of torture ourselves. So if you want to change the world for the better, well, we'll have to change ourselves for the better. And then we can benefit from the positive influences we are getting from other solar systems rather than from the negative influences which we are attracting at the moment. So it's always a mix. And when, But when working with alien uh, cultures it is important to realize that most of the impulses at the present time are more, rather negative. Uh, so you really have to pay attention to make sure you find the positive influences and you work with them rather than working with alien powers in general because this is not a healthy thing to do. Okay, so I hope this will uh, help you in your interactions.